Hallelujah. 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 Ha ha ha. Well, we want to look at some things as it pertains to developing our faith this evening. And uh, we're going to look at, I don't want to say we're going to approach it from a, a different angle, but we're going to approach it uh, the way the Lord has told me to. And uh, the Bible says, and, and you can go there if you want or, or write it down, Romans 10, 17, you, you probably know it by heart, the faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now, one of the first things that begins to happen when you start. Now, faith all obviously begins to come the minute that you begin to hear the word of God. But here's what begins to occur even on, on a higher level. Is that your mind starts being renewed. You will never function in faith without a renewed mind. It just won't happen. Now, when I say a renewed mind, I don't just mean uh, a renewed mind as far as, uh, you know, I'm free from sin, I'm free from this. That's, that's a large part of it. I mean a renewed mind about who you are in Christ, a renewed mind about what's, at, what's mine, what's at my disposal. I said this morning, when you read Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, you see the two things, the first two things that God gave man was authority and dominion and seed. I have authority and dominion and the ability to sow seed, I'm unstoppable. Amen. He did not give the rhinoceros the ability to sow seed. There, there, is, there is no other created entity in the earth that sows seed except us. Why? Because no, no other being was given authority and dominion except us. See, I've got to renew my mind to that. If I'm going to attach faith to it, I've got to renew my mind to it. Now, Brother Hagin used to say this. He said, your mind doesn't stay renewed anymore and your hair stays combed. You've got to get up every day and do it. Now, what does that mean? I have to get up every day, and here's the phrase, actively engage in renewing my mind. Actively engage in renewing my mind. Here's the problem that people have. They hear something a couple times and they think they know it. Amen. We were talking today, some, me and some of the gentlemen in the parking lot, and we were talking how funny it is that, uh, you know, uh, when your kids were home and they were growing up, they left every light in the house on. Took 45 minute showers. Right? Stood there and made their sandwich and left the refrigerator open. I see parents going, yeah, and kids going. <laughs> right? Never thought about it. Because, right, you're paying the bill. Man, then they grow up and they get in their own place. And you go visit them, they're like, whoo, my electric bill was high last month. <laughs> really? Do tell. <laughs> right? Yeah. They're following you around. Dad, turn the lights off. <laughs> right? Because, because they thought they knew. You would tell them something at home. Now, not all of them, but, but the majority. You would tell them, have you ever got that? You know, you'd tell them something. And you've only lived twice as long as them. And they kind of look at you like, whatever. Yeah, okay, I know. They don't know. They don't know. They've never paid a bill. Never balanced a checkbook. Have no, never worked a job long enough to get a check, hardly. I mean, I'm not, it is funny, but I mean, I'm not making fun, but right? I run into people. And that's, and that's how they're, they're trying to operate principles that they know nothing about. Because the first thing the Word starts doing is renewing your mind. 
if, if I want to function in faith and develop my faith, it starts with renewing my mind. Amen. But what do I have to do? Actively engage in it every day. I'm not telling you what to do. But I'm saying this would be a good idea for everybody. It, this year is to see how much TV I can live without. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, and, I, and I'm not being legalistic. Amen. Amen. But, you, you, you know, there are people that, that, that just go home, and they've had a hard day, and I understand that. I mean, I know we work hard. And, you know, sometimes you just want to go home and get a burrito and just, right, and eat and have a glass of sweet tea. Or in my house, stevia tea. And just kick back and, and, and right, watch Lily play and... Do nothing. And the whole time, circumstances are working. Right? I'm not telling you you can't ever watch TV. I'm saying I want to actively engage in renewing my mind every day and see how much word I can get in me. Amen. There are the, the, the side effects of overdosing on the word are glorious. Yeah. Amen. Extreme health, extreme prosperity, extreme victory. Yeah. Right? Amen. But I've got to get up and actively and get now what that requires is discipline. That's one of those bad words. But it requires a discipline. To get up and actively, I'm, I'm not talking about listening to somebody else talk about the word to me. I mean getting the word and putting my eyes on the word every day and letting my mind be renewed by the word of God. And, and of course, then I'm keeping, I'm keeping the word playing and I'm keeping the word going everywhere I go. Amen. Amen. You can get a doctorate in biblical studies by just keeping the word in your car. But what am I doing? I'm actively engaging in renewing my mind. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Because we're going to develop our faith. We're going to develop our faith. You know, I can't say this enough. I've just, there, there, there are things, I just made the decision. If, if you, you call it whatever you want, I've drawn the line. I've thrown down the gauntlet. This is it. Tony, this is it. We have it now. Amen. We have it now. You know, it's kind of like the guy that used to threaten you in school. After school, I'm going to whoop you. After school, what about now? I mean, you're going to whoop me, whoop me now. Get, let's get it over with. One way or the other. I'm not going to walk around all day looking over my shoulder. If, if you whoop me, fine. Then I'll admit you can whoop me. But I'm not waiting six more hours. Matter of fact, whack, you know, let's go, right? <laughs> and you might wake up seeing stars, but it's over. It's I got it over with. Amen. It's right now. I'm not putting, the, Joshua came to the people of Israel when he had taken them into the promised land and they had been there for a number of years and he came to certain of the tribes after being there for years and he said, how long are you going to not go up and possess what God said you could have? It was there, it was given to them and they just weren't possessing it. Amen. No, no, no. It's not going to be us. We're taking all that he wants us to have. Now. Now. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, 
but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So a person is either spiritually or carnally minded. Now, you can't cast out a carnal mind. You can't pray away a carnal mind. I can't lay hands on you and fix a carnal mind. It has to be renewed by actively engaging in the Word. And where we've run into a lot of problems is people say, well, you know, I'm thinking these bad thoughts must be a spirit of lust or just your carnal mind. Right? And I've had people come up and say, I'm thinking bad thoughts. Pray for me. Why? My mind is my mind. I'm either going to have a spiritual mind or a carnal mind. If I'm actively engaging in renewing my mind, that carnality is going to start slipping away. And the spiritual side of me is going to begin taking over. Amen. Do, do, do you see that? A carnal mind can't be fixed by natural means. It has to be renewed. Everybody say, my mind has to be renewed. And here's why. I want to operate at the optimum level in everything God wants me to do. I want my faith operating at its optimum level. So my mind has to be renewed. Amen. Because that, if, if a person is functioning in a carnal mind, it affects their faith. In, in, in whatever area. That's not just sin. A person whose mind's always on carnal things, they're going to have a hard time operating their faith and believing God because they're not building their faith. Does that make sense? Now, notice Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. And verse 3. Now, you know this verse, but notice. He says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Perfect peace. It's, it's literally a double reference in Hebrew. Peace, peace. Perfect peace. Whose mind, the word mind, is thoughts or imaginations who is stayed on you. Keeping your mind stayed on the Lord and on the Word is the key to a constant flow of restoration and peace. I'm keeping my mind fixed on Him. Keeping my mind stayed. See, that's, that's actively engaging every day. Amen. I've told people over the years, you want to know how to stay married? Stay engaged with each other. Talk. Visit. Love one another. Make time for conversation. Actively engage each other. Don't be like two ships passing in the night. You know, you just... Amen. Hallelujah. I've counseled people over the years. Well, she don't want anything to do with me. Well, when's the last time you talked to her? Uh, talk? What's that? Talk, visit. And I know we make fun of, of, of men. You know, men don't like to talk. Yeah, we like to talk. It's just certain things we like to talk about. Now, I'm, I'm the opposite. I, I love to talk to my wife. I'm a good husband. So are you, Anthony. Dan, you didn't say nothing, but you, you did. <laughs> Anthony went, that's right. And Tanya went, now she did. She, she wasn't paying attention. Amen. I'm joking. I probably ought to go over here to Greg or one of these guys. Amen. <laughs> Talk. Visit. Because you're renewing your mind. Amen. If, if I maintain a carnal mindset about it, I'm going to cause a problem. He said that the way to have a continual flow 
of restoration and peace is to keep my mind stayed on Him. The word there, peace, is the word mashalem or shalom. It's nothing missing and nothing broken. So notice, that is the goal. That's the objective. That's the destination. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Right? If you aren't there yet, just keep your mind stayed on the Lord. If you're not there yet, keep actively engaging in renewing your mind. Amen. Well, how long will it take? The rest of your life. Till you die or Jesus comes. And then even after Jesus returns and takes us to heaven, we're still going to be renewing our mind about some things. Because we're still not going to know it all. As perfect as we will be and as glorified as we will be, as in a perfect state of knowledge as we will be, we will still be in the presence of one who is more perfect. And he will always have something to show perfect beings. So my mind will always be being renewed. How will it always be being renewed? By keeping it stayed on him. Amen. Do you see that? He said, your mind, that is, I said this, imagination or thoughts. My keeping my imagination and my thoughts stayed on him. Now that's not just, when we think imagination and thoughts, we think, you know, bad thoughts, uh, lustful thoughts. That's part of it, but just a small part. You got to keep your mind stayed on him concerning what he said about you. What he said about you being the righteousness of God in Christ. What he said about you being a new creation. What he said about you being created in the image and the likeness of God. Amen. What he said about you being more than a conqueror. What he said about you being able to do all things through Christ that strengthens you. What he said about you not being able to be defeated no matter what the weapon is that's formed against you. Amen. That that, that doesn't just happen. Your carnal mind expects for you to be defeated. But when I'm actively engaging the Word of God in mind renewal, I begin to expect to win in every situation that I go into. Amen. The God's Word translation says, He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind cannot be changed. Whose mind cannot be changed. My mother was good at this. Because she would tell you something. You'd go and ask, can I go here? She'd say, no. And you know how a kid is. I'd come back five, ten minutes later. Oh, please. And finally she'd look at me and she'd say, Philip Wayne, I'm not changing my mind. You're not going. I knew that was it. I'm not going. So what do you do? Call your buddies, tell them I'm not going to be there. Why? Because mama said. He'll keep the person in perfect peace whose mind cannot be changed. How does that happen? Actively engaging in mind renewal. My mind cannot be changed. Say it out loud. My mind mind cannot be changed. changed. The whole tactic of the enemy is trying to get you to change your mind. The book of Proverbs says the person that's blessed is the person that's not given to change. That doesn't mean you don't change and and grow. It means I'm not going to change my mind about what God said. Amen. What you see today is a lot of people changing their mind about what God said. And what it results in is destruction. Amen. The the tactic of the enemy, of the adversary, is getting you to change your mind, blinding your mind. He wants your attention. He wants to get your attention. He wants to take your thoughts down a road. Oh, this is so important. He wants to take your thoughts down a road of fear. What might happen? Amen. Amen. It can be subtle or it can be overt. 
But he wants to take you down that road of fear. He wants to take your mind down a road of worry. Amen. And if I'm not actively engaging in mind renewal, he'll get it done. Because that's his playground. That's where he thrives. Amen. The enemy has known for a millennia that the battleground is the mind. Amen. He wants to take you down that road of unforgiveness. But if I'm actively engaging in renewing my mind, love is not fretful. Love is not easily offended. And because love is not easily offended, and God is love, and I'm in God, then I'm love. So Philip is not easily offended. Philip pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Well, what, am, what are you doing when you're saying that, Pastor? I'm actively engaging in renewing my mind. Yeah, but I don't feel any different. Doesn't matter. Your mind's changing. You know, I really, I really learned something by this. You know, the physical brain feels no pain. I remember when, when uh, uh, Miss Jeannie Caldwell, Pastor Caldwell, Miss Jeannie, when she went in for that, they found that tumor on her brain, and they went in for the procedure. The, the doctor said, I could do this procedure without, without putting her out because the brain feels no pain. Now, I know we're talking about a physical brain, but that spoke to me. If I, don't, if I don't actively engage in renewing my mind, I won't even know what's going on because it's, it's so subtle. He'll have me going down that road of unforgiveness before I even know what's going on because it's not painful. It's subtle. And before you know it, he's got me over here in a place of unforgiveness or a place of worry or a place of fear and I didn't even know how I got there. But if I'm up every day engaging my mind by renewing my mind, I will not fear. Amen. Amen. Not going to walk in fear. I'm not going to worry. I'm actively engaging in mind renewal. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4. Listen. What might happen is one of the greatest tactics of the enemy. Well, you know, this could happen. Well, if it could, that also means it's possible that it couldn't. See, I just look at things different. You know, people say, oh, Pastor, you know, they gave a 50% chance of snow. That means there's a 50% chance it won't. It's not just positive thinking. I've renewed my mind to that. You know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, people refer to it as the weekend. Not me, it's the strong end. I have no weekends in my life. They're strong ends. Amen. The clock that sits by my bed, it's not an alarm clock, it's an opportunity clock. Although those are just words. No, that's mind renewal. There are people sitting in here, you're working on deadlines right now. And it brings a whole new mindset to you. Oh, I got to do something because there's a deadline. But what if you got a lifeline? Man, once I get that, there's a whole new world that opens up to me. It's renewing my mind. Amen. 1 Corinthians 4, 4, look what he said. He said, or 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. Forgive me. He said, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Blinding the mind hinders faith. Darkening the perception is what that means. The devil blinds the minds so you can't believe. 
I got to stay actively engaged in renewing my mind. Because his goal, his job, his desire is to blind my mind, to darken my perception. And he does that not only with things that are considered sinful, he does that by dragging people off into bad doctrine. And darkening their perception. Amen. I, I have dealt with a, a, situ, a situation here, uh, well, for quite some time now, uh, dealing with a person. They always want a confirmation. A confirmation. I need the Lord to confirm what He said to me. Why? Why do you need that? If you know the Lord said it, why do you need a confirmation? The Lord said it. You said the Lord said. Why do you need a confirmation? People say, is that the devil? Partly, yeah. Always getting them to chase a confirmation. And if they don't get a confirmation, they'll doubt what God said to them. If what you know God spoke to you is not enough, then you need to actively engage in mind renewal some more. I'm not promised any other leading than the inward witness. That's all I'm promised. I'm not promised a dream. I'm not promised a vision. I'm not promised an angel. I'm only promised the inward witness. If God has to speak to me in two extreme terms, it makes me wonder why I didn't hear the still small voice. If God's got to break through with a thunderbolt for me, it makes me wonder why wasn't I listening? Because I know that was not his initial response. Amen. When uh, Brother Hagen was in the, the hospital, he had hurt his arm. Maybe I told you this story not too long ago, but I'll tell it again. And uh, he had hurt his arm, and, and, and I won't get into all that, but he had had to have some surgery on it. And he was laying there in, in his bed. He, he, you know, he was ready to go home, but they wanted to keep him. And uh, he said, I heard footsteps coming down the hall. And long story short, Jesus came in the room. And Jesus sat down and talked to him for an hour and a half about different things. And one of the things he talked to him about was the inward witness, being led by your, by your spirit. And Jesus told him, he said, I will never again lead you in such a, 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 a spectacular manner. Because you have to be, learn to be led by the inward witness. When somebody says, well, you know, I just need a confirmation. It's evidence they don't have their mind renewed to what the Word says. He said the Word was a lamp to your feet and a light unto your path. Jesus said in John 14, 15, 16, and 17 that the Holy Spirit would come and He would lead us. And He would guide us. And He would speak to us. And He would tell us things that are to come. I've never seen anybody get into trouble following the inward witness. I've seen scores of people get in trouble following a confirmation or an outside leading. Because all of those things can be manipulated by the devil. And he wants to keep the perception darkened so he can keep manipulating the situation and keep you out of where God wants you to be. Amen. You know, there's nobody under the sound of my voice that would go put out a fleece. Because, you know, you get fleeced. There, there's nobody that would say, Now, Lord, if it's your will, let three green cars pass by and one yellow one. Right. We wouldn't do that. But listen, it's the same thing when we say, Oh, I just, I just need a confirmation. I just wish the Lord would confirm it. How would, how would you feel? How, how, Rusty, how would you feel if you told uh, Tony something? And said, I'm going to do this tomorrow for you. And he goes around to Jim and other people and says, you know, Rusty said this, but I'd just like a confirmation. I'd just like to know he really meant what he said. Rusty's going to go, what in the world? I, I thought we were friends. I thought he believed me. Right? If the Lord said to you, I'm going to do this. That's it. I don't need another confirmation. You see, the enemy wants you chasing confirmations. He wants you chasing signs. He wants you chasing 
visions. Amen. I had somebody ask me the other day, what do you think this blood moon means? I don't know, red moon. <laughs> I mean, I'm not making light of anything. I, it don't mean anything to me. Right. Oh, I believe it means Jesus is coming back soon. Jesus has been coming back soon for 2,000 years. I don't need a moon to tell me that. I believe it means time short. Really? You, you think? I don't need a moon to tell me time short. Amen. All of those signs that people are talking about are not for the church. They're for the unbelievers and the Jews. Not for us. We have the word. I don't need a moon to tell me Jesus is coming back. Well, what do you think all these earthquakes mean? It means what Jesus said. My point is, if, if, if a person keeps looking for that, they need to renew their mind to how to be led. You will never walk in the level of faith that you could walk in if you need outside evidence that God's going to do what He said. It takes no faith to believe a sign. Am I helping you with this? Do you remember when uh, they came to Thomas and they said, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. <laughs> now, as far as we know, these guys had never lied. At least the Bible didn't tell us they did. And Thomas said... If I don't see the print of the nail in his hand and see the wound in his side, I will not believe. Right? And then a couple days later, they're all up there eating and Jesus walks through the wall. Whew. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! I, that's a sign. <laughs> And he didn't mince words. He went right to Thomas. And he said, look, put your finger in the hole in my hand. Put your hand in my side. Oh, and Thomas, why you got your finger in the hole and your hand in my side? Don't you be faithless. So that means you can see a sign and still have no faith. He saw Jesus. He put the hole in his hand. Put the, the finger in the hole in his hand. Shut up, Buzz. <laughs> what <Lord> a <of> God. <laughs> well, I wanted to say that. <laughs> I'm joking. This is not going up on YouTube. It's, it's... Nothing like being home. <laughs> let, me, let me help you as Buzz corrected me. He put his finger in the hole in his hand. <laughs> and Jesus still said, you're faithless. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Now you know this, but remember what Jesus said? Thomas, you had faith because you saw it. If I'm constantly looking for a sign, my mind is not renewed enough to function in faith. Amen. Well, I just need to know. You know, I just want to know. I just, the, I just want the Lord. He did. He said, he said, you believe because you've seen. He said, the ones that are blessed are those that have believed and have not seen. When Jesus was walking through Capernaum and the centurion came to him, Mark uh, uh, chapter 10, and came to him and said, my servant lies at home uh, uh, sick, dying, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I'll come heal him. You know what he said? I'll come heal him. Boy, right there, right there. Oh, hey, come on. Yes, yeah. Right? I mean, right there, I'm getting the, mm, I'm getting the unction. Mm. <laughs> 
Mm. Might even triple unction. Right? Jesus is coming to our house. You know what the centurion did? No, no, no. Wait a minute. I'm a man under authority. I tell this one to go and he goes. I tell this one to come and he comes. I tell this one to do this and he does it. I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Speak the word only my servant will be healed. And Jesus stopped and turned around and said, I have not found such great faith in Israel. Centurion didn't need to feel anything. He didn't need to see anything. He said, just speak the word and my servant will be whole. Because he had a mind that was renewed to how authority functions. And if you say it, it's going to happen. Amen. The enemy darkens the perception by getting us to go after something other than what did the word say. What did God's word say? The first thing I begin to actively renew my mind to is this, that what God said is what's going to happen. Right? If God said it, that's going to happen. My needs are met according to His riches in glory. And I'm actively renewing my mind to that. And the enemy comes and says, well, where's the money? Oh, I've got it. Well, I don't see it. Yeah, but I've got it. If I've got the word, I've got the money. Because the word is the source of the money. Look over at John 1. Am I helping anybody? I, I want you to see this. Whew. Say it out loud. If I've got the word, I've got the thing. Now you've got to understand that. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by Him. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. If I have the Word, I have the thing. Yeah, but I don't feel healed. But do you have the word? Yes, then you have your healing. Amen. The, enemy, the enemy flips the script. He wants you looking for the manifestation and then saying, I'm healed. Got to actively renew my mind. I'm healed because I have what the word says. Amen. Look, look at Hebrews 11. I told you, we're going to develop our faith. I believe God. It says, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the title deed, the proof of things not seen yet. Now, that's another verse that we know, but notice what it says, faith is the substance or the title deed or the proof of the evidence of things not seen. So the enemy, to get you away from faith, he gets you looking for physical substance, physical feeling, physical evidence. That moves you out of faith. If you believe because you see, you're not in faith. I'm, I'm healed because I see in the Word that I'm healed. This is why walking by faith is not hard. It's different. It requires the renewal of your mind. Amen. Amen. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. Faith operates in an environment where things aren't seen. 
The reason why a doctor's report can shake somebody is because they're operating on what they can see. If I have the word on something, why should a bad report be able to discourage me? If I'm in faith. Go over to Mark chapter 5. Boy, I've got a lot to say. Now, I'm just going to say it. I got nothing to do with the rest of my life but build your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark chapter 5. And notice verse 22. Behold, there cometh to him one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he was come, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My, my little daughter lieth at home at the point of death. I just taught on this in healing school in the Little Rock location. I've been teaching through the miracles of Jesus. And when you read the different gospel versions of this, when, when you read Matthew and Luke, it gives you the very strong indication she was dead when he came to Jesus. Mark just gives you this preliminary. He, they, they knew she, she probably died before he ever got there. I pray thee, come lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she will live. And Jesus went with him. One of the, one of the, one of the gospels says he, he, he immediately went with him. So they're on the way. Now you know the story. The woman with the issue of blood came up. Stopped the whole procession. But notice something here. While he yes spake, verse 35... There came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master any further? Your daughter is dead. Now look at verse 36. And can you show me this in the Amplified Bible? Because this is so important. Mark 5, 36 in the Amplified Version. Notice what it says. Overhearing but ignoring what they said. Now hang on right there. Overhearing, what did he overhear? What's that? Hey, hey, we gave it a shot. If, if we could have just got through this crowd a little quicker, I, I know I could have got there, but you know, I mean, I'll comfort you in your grief. No, it's not what he said, was it? What did he overhear again? What's that? But what did he do? Why? What did Jairus say? Come, lay your hands on her, and she will be healed and live. To Jesus, that meant even if she's dead, you've already given me the faith command to come lay my hands on her and she's going to live. So let's just ignore the circumstance and let's just keep going with what you said. Do you see how the bad report didn't fluster Jesus? The Bible says he's the author of our faith. And not only the author, the finisher of it. We have the same faith he has. And if I will actively renew my mind to that, then I go to the doctor and the doctor gives me a report that I wasn't expecting. And instead of it discouraging me and bringing me down, my faith is still there working at its optimum level. And I say my faith is not based on a doctor's report or based on what they said. My faith is based on what the Word says. So doctor's report, you can't discourage me. I'm not discouraged. I'm not sad. I'm not worried. I'm still the healed of the Lord. Is that what he said? Overhearing, but ignoring. Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be seized with alarm. 
and struck with fear. Only, now watch, don't lose this. Here's what you're only supposed to do. Keep on believing. What's my job? Believe. Amen. When, when you see things going south, what's your job? When it looks like it's not going the way God said it was going to go, what's your job? You've got to actively renew your mind to that. My job's believe. Amen. Yeah, but, but you know, I wasn't expecting that. Right, and you're going to face a lot of other things you're not expecting. And if you don't get up every morning and actively engage in mind renewal to this, that, that, that your life is going to go ultimately the way, the direction of the Word of God. And I am not promised in the Word that I will never, ever not get a bad report. I am promised that I have a choice as whose report I'm going to believe. Right? So I, I can believe that bad report and get discouraged. Oh man, I thought I was getting better. Oh, I thought, I thought things were going, uh, were turning. Well, who said they weren't? Where, where's the scripture for that? Chapter and verse for things are not getting any better. Amen. That's not a scripture, that's a country song. Things aren't getting any better. <laughs> Amen. No. The Word says, for the righteous, our pathway grows brighter and brighter. I'm more healed today than I was yesterday. I'm more blessed today than I was yesterday. Well, but the doctor said, I understand that, but here's what I'm saying. I'm better than I was. Well, he says you're not. Don't care what he said. I'm ignoring what he said. This is what the Word says. Amen. And you know the end result of this. Jesus laid His hands on her, and she was healed and came back to life. Amen. Amen. Actively engaging. The enemy wants to take you down that road. Darken your perception. Faith does not need a sign to prove to you that things are changing. Faith is a force that if you allow it to, it stands on its own. It will keep working the more you work it. The more you strengthen your faith, your faith is always working. When you lay down on your pillow tonight, your faith does not go to sleep. Your faith keeps working to bring to you what you're actively believing that God's bringing to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you see that? So while I'm sleeping tonight, my faith is working on providing what I need to do what God said I needed to do. My job is believe, not produce. Amen. Your job is not to produce the finances you need. Your job is to believe that God already has them and they're coming to you. My job is not to produce healing. It's to believe I'm already the healed of the Lord and I'm walking in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the enemy will try to darken the perception. Amen. Get you to look at circumstances. And, and sometimes when we teach on this, we, we even kind of become callous to it. Because we're so quick to say, well, you know, now I'm going to the doctor. Now I believe I'm healed. Why'd you have to say that? Why'd you have to say that? Who are you trying to convince? I'll tell you who you're trying to convince. You. You. You're trying to convince yourself you're healed. I don't care if you go to the doctor five times a day. It's none of my business. But people say, now we're going to the doctor. Now we believe we're healed. Why are you going to say that? 
Who said you didn't believe you were healed? Your mind is not engaged in renewal enough to understand that just because I'm going to the doctor does not mean that I believe I'm not healed. Amen. Do you see this? And so we're so quick in faith circles. Now, I'm not moved by what I see. Why you got to say that? If you believe you're not moved by what you see, just don't be moved by what you see. Leave it at that. I don't go around telling people all the time, now, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I see. We're believing God for this multiple thousands of dollars, but I'm not moved by what I see. If you're in faith, just be in faith. Just stay there. You know, I don't go around telling people all the time, I'm married, I'm married, I'm married, I'm married. I just be married. And what, listen, I'm, I'm helping you with this. What follows that, just being that, a lifestyle? When you are just in faith, what follows that? A faith lifestyle. Your job is just maintain being in faith. Actively engaging in mind renewal, keeping myself in faith. Paul said you need to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. So what's my job? Examine myself. Am I in faith? I'm not saying things to try to make you think I'm in faith. I'm not saying the right thing just so you'll think I'm in faith. You got to train yourself in that. Well, now I went to the doctor, you know. Now I went to the doctor not because I'm in doubt, but who cares? That is evidence, I'm helping you with this, that is evidence you don't really believe you're healed. That's good. Amen. Amen. You follow me? If the report comes back and it moves me, then it's evidence I didn't believe I was healed. Well, oh, Pastor, that's strong. It was true. What's the evidence of faith in your life? Joy and peace and believing. Why does the enemy come after your peace? He knows if he gets your peace, he's get, he'll get your faith. Amen. Yeah, Pastor, that's, that's a strong statement. It might save your life. He said you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Right? Now notice this. Oh, glory to God. I want, I want to show you something. Look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Because we're talking about uh, him blinding the mind. I'm not going to take too much more time. I'm not going to be able to get through all this tonight. Probably won't be able to get through all of it for the next few weeks. But we're going to give it a shot. You know, I just hear so many harebrained ideas about faith. And I hear people talking about faith, and they don't have a lick of idea what faith is. They don't have any idea. Or as my grandma would say, no idea. <laughs> Actually, she said, he don't have nary idea. Amen. Paul said this, if you have faith, have it to yourself. I'm helping you renew your mind. Don't go around telling everybody what you're believing for. We're believing for this and we're believing for that. Don't, don't do that. Everybody doesn't believe with you. If you're married, talk to, you, talk to your wife, talk to your husband. This is what we're believing God for. And y'all stay in faith about it. Pick somebody out that you know is in faith and go get with them. Amen. Because there are people, they, they don't have any idea what faith is. Amen. What do you do about those people? Stay away from them. 
Don't tell them anything you're believing God for. Amen. They'll pollute you. John (laughs) chapter 1, verse 32. Notice this. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw him and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now did he say, the Lord told him, the Father told him, the one you see the Spirit descending on and staying on, that's the one that's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. And he said, I saw him and bear record. What did he bear record? This is the Son of God. Did he say that? So John had received light. He had received revelation knowledge straight from God. Yes or no? Straight from God. And what did he say? This is the Son of God. Look at Luke chapter 7. Now you know what I said about the doctor bringing discouragement. That's why you got to stay on guard against that. That will try to shake your faith. The enemy will try try to rob from you. Well, I'm not as far along as I wanted to be. Yeah, but you're farther along than you were. Amen. Well, they said, I'm not progressing as fast as I could be. Yeah, but you're progressing. Yes. See, the enemy wants to discourage you. What's the Bible say in the book of Proverbs? Sustains a man in times of bodily pain or trouble, his strong spirit. Amen. And how does your spirit stay strong? By feeding it the word of God. Amen. Amen. And then when you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a bad report or a mild report or not as good a report as you thought, your spirit stands up full of faith and says, yeah, but we're not moved by what we see, hear, or feel. We're only moved by what the Word says. Amen. Amen. That's just it. Glory to God. Luke 7, verse 19. Notice this. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you he that should come, or do we look for another? I thought he said, I saw him and did bear witness that he was the Son of God. Now listen to me. Did he see the Holy Spirit descend on Jesus? Did he see the Spirit remain on him? Did he say out loud, this is the Son of God? And now he's saying, are you him or do we look for another? What did he receive from the Father? Light. Revelation. Right? And Jesus said, notice what Jesus said. Verse 22. Jesus answered and said, go your way and tell John the things you've seen and heard. How the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers cleanse, the dead Uh, uh, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. John's mind was blinded from the truth he once declared. Read it in the book of John. Three times he told people, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He looked at his two disciples in the book of John and, and, and saw Jesus, saw Jesus walk and looked at his disciples and said, look guys, that's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And it says two of them went and followed Jesus and said, Master, where do you live? He said, come and see. And they went and stayed all night with him. He's declaring this is the Son of God. And then he gets in this situation, he goes, hmm, is he the one or do we look for another? He followed a path of thoughts that led him to offense. He said, this is what he said. This is what him that sent me to baptize said. He said, you're healed. He said, you're blessed. He said, your family's saved. Don't let the devil take you down a pathway 
of thoughts that are going to lead you to get offended. Mark chapter 4 says the problem with all those people is they got offended at the Word. How do you get offended at the Word? Well, I thought I'd be better by now. I thought I was healed and I went to the doctor and he said I'm still not better. That's the enemy's attempt to get you offended at the Word. Who said you're not blessed? Who said you're not healed? Did God change his mind? When the doctor said, well, you know, it's still not as good as, as, as it could be, did God go, oh, boy, I missed that one. Oh, man, I thought, they were, I, I thought John was healed. But doggone, the doctor said he wasn't. Man. Now, I know, I know that, that that's funny, but that's how subtle it is if I'm not actively engaging in mind renewal. This is what God said. I decided something a long time ago. I'm going to wrap this up. I decided something a long time ago. When I see it in the Word, that's it. Now, I tell you that story about John 17, 17. Where he said, sanctify them through your Word. Your Word is truth. And I put one hand on that verse. And I raised my other hand to God. And I said, I make the choice today that every word in this book is absolute truth. Settled the issue for me. Faith does not operate where there's a belief that God lied. And most believers that you know would never say God lied. But they'll say things like, well, it must not have been His will. Then you're saying He lied. Because He said, I, I desire, I wish, I pray, I want above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He said over and over again what His will was. If it is His will, then He's saying, I want this for you. Amen. Do you see that? You got to settle the fact this is truth. Absolute truth. It did not become truth when I started believing it. It began to work in my life when I started believing it. This is true. Amen. Amen. You want to know how I know you're going to come out of what you're dealing with? Because the truth says you are. Amen. 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 Say it out loud. I expect to be better. Say, I expect to be blessed. I expect to, I expect to have victory. I expect to because have the, victory. Truth says it. Because the truth says it. That's it. Now, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. How do I know that's going to happen? Because the Word says it. That's why you've got to get up every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. E-V-E-R-Y-D-A-Y, every day, and actively engage in renewing your mind. Amen. Let me finish this up. Eve was spiritually alive and had access to all of God's knowledge. She took Satan's thoughts into her mind, and her mind changed. When the woman saw what was her thought before? Don't eat from that tree. But when she took his thoughts, oh, saw that the tree was good for food and good to make one wife, she took of it and ate of it. See, that's what the enemy's trying to do. You can go into a situation saying, I'm healed and whole and well in the name of Jesus. And then another thought tries to come in. Don't go down that road. I am, I am what the Word says I am. Well, I was doing good till I saw the doctor's report. What, why did that change anything? See, it, it was a replacement thought. Do you see this? We're developing our faith. It was a replacement thought. That this might not be the way it is. You might not be healed. 
you might not be blessed. You might not get the job you've been believing for. Because here's where the enemy will bring the thought, why is it taking so long? Why isn't anything changing? The Bible doesn't say for you to start asking, why is it taking so long and why isn't anything changing? The Bible says that you have believed, you believe, that you received, and you have. When did I have it? When I believed I received it. So what's your answer? Now I'm closing, I'm, I'm wrapping this up with this. Listen to me. So what's your answer? No, 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 no. I believed I received. I have it. Yeah, but the symptoms, yeah, and, and I have it. The symptoms were there before you were believing God. Right? And so, because you have symptoms after you're believing God, doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean nothing. Let, let, me, let me close with a story. I'm not done, but I'll find a place to pause. There was a Raymond instructor one time, and he had hor very bad eyesight. Horrible, we could say. I mean bad. Could, could not see. Well, without his Coke bottle glasses, he couldn't see to drive. Couldn't see to walk around. It was bad. Could, couldn't see the clock in the back of the auditorium. And he began to believe that he was healed. So on the word, and he began to declare it. I'm the healer of the Lord. I'm the healer of the Lord. My eyes are good. The Lord's made the hearing ear and the seeing eye, and mine are good. Blessed are my eyes because they see. And man, he'd get done teaching his class, and he'd take those glasses off and look at the clock. Couldn't see it. And he'd say, thank God I have received my healing. Put his glasses back on, go home. He did that for months. Every time he was in class, he was doing that. People say, how are your eyes? He'd say, healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah, but he's still wearing the glasses. What's that got to do with anything? If you can't believe you're healed while you're wearing your glasses, you'll never be be believe you're healed if you take them off. If you go to stand up tonight and you still feel the pain and it makes you believe you're not healed, you didn't believe you were healed in the first place. The pain is not evidence that I'm not healed. Amen. So he'd teach his class, take his glasses off, look at that clock, couldn't see it. Thank you, Lord, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Put his glasses back on, drive home. Man, that went on for months. One day he came up and he taught his class, took his glasses off, looked at the clock, said, thank you, Lord, I'm healed. Left his glasses sitting there and went and drove home. Never needed him again. How many times did he put the glasses back on believing he was healed? And people would say, how are you doing? How's your eyes? Healed. Amen. Amen. That's all you got to say. It's none of their business whether you're still in pain or not. It's none of their business what the doctor said. And the glory of the Lord will rise upon you and upon your home. And it will be seen in the living room and it will be seen in the kitchen even in a tangible, visible form of the glory cloud of the Lord Jesus Christ. And people will come into your home and fall to their knees and worship God because of the power and the manifestation of His presence in your home. I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. It's none of their business if you feel better or not. Your faith, Tony, faith is personal. It's between me and God. I'm healed. Amen. I say I'm healed. Say out loud, I'm healed. That there are things we're all believing for. Physical things. There's things we're believing God for. We have them. We have them. I say we have them. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
I've had a person come up to me dealing with something on their skin before. And they come up and say, well, you know, this just isn't going away. Who said that? Who said it's not going away? Amen. Amen. If you go, if you go and lay down in your bed tonight and all those symptoms try to come back on you, who said you weren't healed? Who told you that? Why'd you hide, Adam? Because I was naked. Who told you? Who told you that? Am I helping you with this? Yeah. See, we're developing our faith. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm going I'm to say, <laughs> I'm a, and the Lord, the power of God is going to go, and this is what I see the Lord telling me. It's going to go to the base of your spine, and it's going to begin to work its way up, and it's going to be gradual. You watch, over the next six weeks, you're going to begin to feel it. It's going to work its way up, and it's going to be gradual, and the result's going to be your complete healing. Now, I'm telling you, and I'm going to say this under the unction of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying these things, and it's not just me saying it. It's going to happen. Amen. He said in his word, you believe my prophets, and it'll happen. It's not, it's, not, it's not something I'm saying. I'm saying this to you based on the word of God. I don't know what I was going to say before the Lord told me to say that to her, but amen. Are you, are you following me? Oh, yes, I do. I, I remember. I went, I went through a physical challenge here a few years back. And man, I would, I would lay down on my bed and all, listen, I, I, the, the, the enemy was doing everything he could do to convince me that this is impossible. This is never going to go away. People say, what would you do? I'd have to get up out of that bed and walk in my living room. I thank you, Lord. I'm the healed of the Lord. I thank you that my body is whole and well in Jesus' name. How long did you have to walk? I quit counting. It didn't matter. I quoted the word till he went away. Well, what would happen? Well, sometimes I'd lay back down. Two minutes later, I had to get back up. Don't you just lay in your bed and let him play with your mind. Lay there and let him tell you about how you're going to die. Lay there and let him run imaginations through your mind. How your family is going to make it without you. Get out of that bed. Go get in faith and tell the devil, you're not doing this to me. I will not die, I will live. Amen. Faith is a fight. And there's times you got, you got to get up and you've got to get bold about it. Don't you just lay there and let him talk. Amen. I, I did, I did, listen, I did everything I knew to do and things I didn't know to do. Why? I'm in a faith fight. Faith is not for the weak hearted. I'm, I'm just telling you that. If, if you are in a faith fight and it's a faith fight, then you've got to be in faith. If, if you're not going to be in faith about it, then you just got to take what they're saying and take your chances. Amen. I'd get up every morning, and I'd put that music on. I see me as healed. I see me as healed. And I would lay in the floor. I just laid before the Lord and just bask in His presence. Close my eyes. To see myself as healed. Amen. Amen. You say, what would happen when you get up? Every symptom would try to come back on my body. What would you do? I'm the healed of the Lord. I remember driving out here to teach, to teach Bible school and gripping that steering wheel so hard, it felt like I was going to break it. I had to come out here and teach Bible school. Everything in me was screaming, turn around, go home. You're going to die. Fear was trying to overrun my life. And I knew if I ever stopped and turned around and went back home, I was done. I had, I had to come to every service. I had to come to every school meeting. I had to go to every meeting that people asked me to be at. I had to go everywhere I needed to go. The whole time with the enemy screaming in my ear, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take your life. This is it. No, it's not. I'm here. Because he's a liar. You got to keep your faith. Out in front of you. The fiery darts were coming and faith was quenching every one of them. 
Amen. I drove by today. I drove by today on the way to church. Because I remember the day. I remember the day. I'd walk down to get our mail. Man, I stepped off. I, just like I was stepping off this, there was a little concrete deal. And I stepped off and walked across two parking spots. And the Lord said, you turn around and you tell that spirit that's been trying to plague you and bother you, you rebuke it and you tell it to leave you and never come back. I turned around and I said, you spirit from hell, you leave me and don't you ever come back. You say, why haven't he left? Amen. Amen. I drove by today and stopped right there in the parking lot and pointed at it, rolled down the window and pointed at it. said, look right over there, devil. That's where you lost. I do it every other time I think about it. That right there is where you lost. And then I remind him, you were a loser then and you're a loser now. You've always been a loser. You talk that way? Yes, I do. It builds my faith in his ability to lose. He is a loser. You lost then and you're always going to lose. You can't make me sick. You can't keep me sick. Amen. Glory to God. Don't, don't, don't sit there and let him talk. Oh, the devil's been telling me I'm not going to make it. Why are you listening? But I believe the Lord told us to do this and it hadn't happened yet. Who told you that? When did you believe you received? Now. Amen. Amen. Okay, Lord, I'll say that. There are people that the enemy's been trying to tell you that you're never going to have the house you want. It just looks impossible. Hmm. I thought faith was the substance of what you're hoping for and the evidence of what you can't see. Yes, you will. You will move into that house and you will enjoy it and you'll have get-togethers, and you'll have family times, and you'll celebrate Christmas, and you'll have grandkids, and maybe even great-grandkids, and they'll all enjoy that house. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. It'll occur. It will occur. So how do you know that? Because that's what he said. He said, I'll give you houses you didn't build. Now let me close with this. Don't, don't get over there. Don't get over there and let the enemy take you down that road. Because I'm telling you, your circumstance is going to change. And when it changes, it will be your faith that changed it and it will be your faith that keeps it changed. There's faith to be healed and there's faith to stay healed. There's faith to get out of debt and faith to stay out of debt. We're developing our faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And you are clothed with the righteousness of God, clothed with the holiness of God, clothed with the manifest presence of God. And what you're going to begin to see, and you mark it down, this is Sunday, you mark it down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The Lord's going to speak to you every morning. And He's going to give you directives of things that are going to absolutely alter the course of your life this year. And people are going to look at you and they're going to say, that can't be the same guy that I knew two years ago. That can't be the same Jeremy. But you're going to look and you're going to say, well, I'm the same Jeremy, but I'm a different man on the inside. And the Lord says, don't you entertain for one moment things going south on you. It's all good for from here. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's all good from here. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. To God. Huh, and listen, boy, you do whatever you want to. If you want to stay with your life the way it is, meaning if you want to stay a single man serving me, you just stay a single man serving me. But if you want somebody to share your life with, you just ask me. I got a good one for you. I believe God. 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 Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 And many, many chains are going to fall. And many bondages are going to leave your life. 
And even the things that the enemies tried to convince you will never go away and you'll never be free from. You're going to be free from it. And you mark my words. You hear it. What's the date today? The 20. 20- 7th of January. You heard it on the 27th of January. In eight weeks, it'll all change. I believe God. And oh, by the way, the number eight is the number of super abundance and complete freedom. That's what's coming into your life. And it has nothing to do with your nationality or your education or your family, where you're from or where you belong. God said, you tell her, I'm going to raise her up out of the dust and I'm going to make her name great. I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. And the thought, Miss Valerie, has been, what if it comes back on him? It's not going to come back on him. It's not going to come back on him. I'm telling you by the power of the Holy Spirit, your husband is a cancer-free zone. Cancer-free zone. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to do something here, and and I know I'm taking a moment, but I'm, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit move. If you are battling any kind of addiction tonight, stand up. Now, if your pride keeps you in your seat, just keep living with it. If you're battling any kind of addiction, stand, oh, glory to God. People say, well, well, what do people think? Doesn't matter what people think. The result's going to be freedom. Amen? Hallelujah. Come, come to the front. Come to the front. Come to the front. Come to the front. Hallelujah. 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 Now, 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 you need to understand, I, I can't lay hands on people and just get them free of something they want to keep. But because you come up here tonight, and it doesn't matter what it is. You know, it don't matter what it is. It doesn't, 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 doesn't matter what it is. You, you might be up here because you're addicted to, to tamales. <laughs> Amen. You know, I, I, and I'm not making light of it. It, it might be something worse. It might, it might be some substance or alcohol or cigarettes or whatever it may be. But it can't stand before the power of God. And because of your willingness, you're going to get free. And I'm not going to ask you to stomp anything or curse anything, break anything. Hallelujah. (laughs) But I am going to tell you this. Oh, it's a lot easier than you think it is. Look at me, my brother. I don't know if you've ever heard my wife's testimony. She was addicted to everything you could be addicted to. Heroin, Dilaudid, all of it. Everything that you could be addicted to. Came into a meeting one night. The man of God said, do you want help? She said, I do want help. Laid hands on her, instantly free. Almost 30 years ago, still free. That's what's going to happen to everybody in this line. Hallelujah. Now, I know you're born again, right? Believer, you believe in Jesus Christ? He's in your heart? Yes, sir. How, what's your first name? Derek. Derek? Hallelujah. Derek, raise your hands just like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Derek, and I thank you that freedom comes into his life right now. Right now. Right now. That foul addiction, loosen your hold on him. There it went. There it went. Ha ha. There it went. I know. I know. I know. It's something, it's something to instantly have a clear mind. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Rusty, pray for him. <laughs> Free. Ho. Free. 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 Freedom. In the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Glory to God. I'm free. I'm free. bondage 
no more chains. I'm free. And he that the Son has made free is free indeed. Oh, glory. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe it will be unto me even as it was said. And Lord Jesus, you said to ask those people that were battling those things to come forward tonight. And you told me, you said to me that they would be made free. So I believe you, sir. I believe what you said. And I declare with no hesitation. I declare with no qualms. No hesitation at all. They're free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what you're going to move into in the overcomers, it's going to be different. But you're going to be laying hands on people. And they're going to get free sitting at the table. And you watch, you mark my words. It's going to become known far and wide. You go to that meeting, you'll get free. You watch. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because of your faithfulness. You had, a, you had a chance about three years ago to cut and run. You had a chance to get offended and walk off. And you said, I don't care what it costs. I'm going to stay with the place God put me and where my life was changed. And because of your faithfulness, God's going to use you. I believe God. I believe God. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Isn't it good to be free? Good to be free. Good to be free. No chains. No bondage. I'm free. 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 Hey, it doesn't matter what it was. I'm free from it. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm free. I'm free. Now that thing does not seem minor. But I'm telling you, I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit. I'm not a medical professional and you know I'm not. I don't claim that. But I'm telling you, the Lord said to tell you this, compared to the overall scope of what He's doing, what you're dealing with in that one circumstance is minor. And what I keep seeing is like something pinched. And that's why it's brief. It goes away. Because when it happens, there's this tensing up. It's like, it's like, <clears throat> and you tense up. But then when you get calm, it goes away. It's minor. Don't worry about it. They're going to find out what it is and correct it. Because you can run through a tree and you can leap over a wall. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. Even though strength tries to leave your body, he said, I, to them that have no strength, I'll increase their might. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You cannot be defeated. And the enemy says, what if it happens again? It might happen again, but you're not moved. You're not moved. You're not moved. Y'all aren't moved. And quit giving your spiritual energy to other people. You need it for the fight you're in. You need it for the fight you're in. Glory be to God. Glory, that goes for all of us. 
Quit giving your spiritual energy to people. You, you need it for what you're going through. You need it for what you're dealing with. Amen. Help them if you can. If they don't want help, you got to keep going. Amen. I better shut up or I'll preach all night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. School tomorrow night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night united. Please be here. Amen. We'll be live streaming from the Little Rock campus. God is so good to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's stand up tonight, shall we? I believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I came to church. Amen. Are you ready? Come on, say it with me. The vision of this church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you.